So how well does this work? First, we examine this in vitro. So we have a jerkette. This is a V cell, which we've made to express the uh, CKID receptor. And we incubate it with our virus. And we can see here that these cells do express, this is expression of the CKID receptor. Um, and then when we infect them, we see about 72%. How to read this graph is just this percentage here. These are cells that have been infected with this virus. So we see that this virus is effective at recognizing these cells and infecting them very efficiently. And now we look at another cell line, which, you know, this is not an engineered cell line um, that naturally expresses endogenous levels of CKIT. And we can see that, again, we can target these cell types. So that's the very important thing. And basically, the other is just a control vector that's targeted against something else, and you see it doesn't infect. So this targeting is working in vitro. So the next thing we ask is, well, can this work in a mouse model? Now, this is the first test to say that you can actually have targeting in vivo. Um, so what we do is we take that cell line, this B cell line, and we implant it sub-Q into a mouse model. Um, the mouse have a xenograft tumor, humor, human tumor, and then we administer a lentiviral vector, um, our targeted vector, on both flanks of the mouse. So now this virus should uh, be able to transduce and recognize these cells, only these cells, um, because they're only on one flank. So you can see where the injection is on the other flank, you don't see, you don't see much, um, much expression, but here you do see. So this is a sub-Q tumor model uh, where you see that there is targeted infection, and then we verify this by flow cytometry. Again, the way to read this is um, that these are infected cells. Here is 10% versus 2% infected. Now this is the standard. This is the standard in the field is using um, this VSV um, like a protein on your virus. So we see that ours is more efficient. Um, but now the real test is, like I said, we want to target blood stem cells. Blood stem cells are in the bone marrow. So we also establish uh, interbone marrow so where you actually inject these cells into the bone marrow of the mouse and then inject the targeted vector um, one week later. And we see that we can also target in the bone marrow. So this means that uh, this vector is, is capable of targeting, targeting these cell types in the bone marrow, which is where the resident cells are living that we want to try to transduce. So that's very, that's very efficient. That's good news. Um, but the next thing we want to see is, well, what if we inject it into in, intravenously? So we inject into the tail, and we want to know, can these virus actually home? So they're injected intravenously, but now they're homing to the tumor, which again is in the right flank. So this means that when you systemically administer them, that they do find their way to where the target cell type is. But you also see some uptake in areas like the spleen, um, where you're going to have background infection because that's where you know high dosage would occur. So this still needs further work to um, examine dosage levels and dosage response. But look, we're using a lot of virus here. We're talking about you know on the order of 10, 10 million viral particles that we're injecting into a mouse. So if we want to do this in a human, we need to make it more efficient. Um, so we before we scale this up, we need to first have the most efficient um, viral vector that we can have. Um, and one way to do that is um, to optimize this infection procedure, because we have a lot of we have a lot of recognition here, but of the of the virus that are actually internalized through some of our other studies um, using imaging techniques, we know that this is kind of the bottleneck. So how can we address this bottleneck? And the way in which we address the bottleneck is to engineer this protein that's on the viral surface. So we change this protein using what virologists have told us about this virus. So virologists have been studying these virus for um, over two decades, so we know a lot about the function of these of these viruses. So we can then adapt adapt these type of proteins and put them on our virus surface. So we take what the virologists have told us and we apply it to our system, and then we can see a dramatic increase. So we can actually we can actually address the efficiency um, by by engineering and mutating these molecules on the surface. So now we have a very efficient. Um, over 12-fold efficient uh, viral, viral particle. And we also look at this. This is telling us how many, how many viral particles are there per mil. So virus production is very important. As we know, it's hard to, it's hard to make virus. So uh, that's one of the hallmarks in, you know, in creating viruses. You need, you know, even in vaccine field, you need to be able to create it very efficiently. 
Uh, so that's what we're looking at here, and we see that when we make mutations, we can make virus more efficiently and it's more effective. Um, so that's, that's how we actually adapt our system. So now we have a very specific virus. So in conclusion, we've developed a lentivector that can mediate targeted to, to these specific blood stem cells. We've demonstrated the potential in vivo, um, and we've demonstrated how we can enhance that production and that infectivity um, of these molecules and of these vectors. And the next steps will be to really take this out of, out of our lab and into the field and apply this by delivering a therapeutic gene um, because we now have the tools to do that. And we can think about using a similar strategy to target different cell types as well, just adapting this methodology. And I'd like to just thank my lab and uh, the David Baltimore lab. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's one, of the, one of the studies that we do is we try to understand how that infectivity is related to the pH that is in that compartment. So, uh, and that's, that's kind of a different study, but I can tell you that um, we've, we've found at the particular pH makes a difference. So when you change the surface chemistry, it's actually the reason you have that increase in infectivity is because of the pH. So the pH is occurring, the fusion activity where it delivers its payload is occurring at a higher pH, which means it's happening faster. So the pH does, does play a role in this kind of infection, but it's occurring intracellularly. So it's hard to, you can't stick a probe in there to study it, I guess, but we use different dyes and markers so that we can see, we can see at what pH it's, effect, it's actually occurring. If you look at the protein uh, and the effect of uh, pH on the surface activity uh -huh. of pro uh, protein, uh, wouldn't that be kind of uh, very high at low and high pH? Yeah, both, so, both sides. Uh, it's, it's actually, these are, so you can only look at one or the other because it's not a reversible, it's not a reversible system uh, because the protein actually, it's as the pH drops, then the proteins unfold and then they, they initiate kind of the endosomal fusion, um, the infection part. So what's happening is the protein, the protein that we put on there, and this has been studied in some of these other biology labs, uh, where it's actually, it's pH dependent and it's, it's a protein folding that's unfolding and non-reversible. So um, I think it is, it is pH dependent in that sense. Mm -hmm. <coughs> One more. How can you be sure the harmful effects of the injected virus are completely eliminated? Oh, okay. Um, well, that's that's a very good question because there are several there are several ways that you have to do that. And um, what we've done is we've taken we've taken the HIV vector and then we've made it you know inactivated so it can't replicate. You can take out a lot of the proteins and then you can also do things uh, to make it more safe. I can just say that uh, without going into the detail that that you that you can remove all of those proteins and those functions that are pathogenic um, so that it is a safe way to introduce a gene. Um, and that gene you can also make so that it doesn't integrate in the cell so it, so it has a short-term effect and you can use a lot of different genetic um, techniques such as promoters um, to control the expression as well so you can ensure safety. But uh, really you have, to, you have to bring it into a clinical trial before you can really assess that in full. Thanks to you again. Thank you.